When we are born, one of the first questions our parents ask, is it a girl or a boy? Like in most mammalian species, our gender is determined by our sex chromosomes. We all know that females have two X chromosomes, whereas development as a male is determined by the Y chromosome, which is passed on by our fathers. This is due to a single gene, SRY, on the Y chromosome that has been shown to be essential to initiate the formation of testis. It does so through activation of its target gene SOX9, which is not on a sex chromosome, but is autosomal. In the absence of either SRY or SOX9 function, the embryonic gonad develops as an ovary. However, there are cases where genetic sex and gender-specific characteristics fail to go hand in hand. For example, in very rare cases, male individuals can have two X chromosomes. The distinctive characteristics of ovaries and testes are the result of the different development of germ and somatic cell lineages in the embryonic gonad of females and males. Whereas in ovaries, granulosa cells support oocyte growth, their functional counterparts in testes are Sertoli cells that support sperm development. Similarly, while Tega cells are responsible for the generation of high estrogen levels in females, Leydig cells are required for testosterone production in males. More than a decade ago, we identified the transcriptional regulator FOXL2, which is encoded by an autosomal gene and subsequently showed that it is sexually dimorphic expressed only in female gonads. Mutation of one copy of FOXL2 in the human germline leads to an autosomal dominant syndrome associated with premature ovarian failure and early menopause, a situation that is also found in mice lacking both copies of the gene. We were therefore quite surprised to see what happened when we ablated FOXL2 function from the adult ovary. Unexpectedly, granulosa and Tega cells, the two major female-specific somatic cell lineages, switched their cell identity into Sertoli and Leydig cells, which are both characteristic of the testis. Moreover, the cells organized into structures reminiscent of seminiferous tubules, also no sperm-forming cells were present. This adds another example to the few cases for which true adult lineage reprogramming has been demonstrated in vivo. The key question that then remained was how ablation of a single factor could trigger such a complex morphological change. The answer is quite simple. FOXL2 is binding and repressing a regulatory element known as TESCO that is required for testis-specific SOX9 expression. Interestingly, FOXL2 cooperates with estrogen receptor in this task, thus providing a possible explanation why loss of estrogen signaling can lead to gonadal sex reversal in lower vertebrates. Our results thus suggest the flip-flop mechanism in which FOXL2 and SOX9 oppose each other's expression to ensure the identity of the different female and male supporting gonadal cell types, a mechanism that may be evolutionary conserved and central to the maintenance of secondary sexual characteristics in vertebrates. Our findings may also have important implications for reproductive biology, in particular for the treatment of sex differentiation disorders in children, as well as premature ovarian failure and female menopause, both of which are associated with declining estrogen levels and occasional signs of masculinization.